In this week's video, we'll talk about some things you can do and config settings you can change to increase the font size in Creo, control the pop-up tabs that launch every time you open the application. We'll also address changing the constraint icons to make them a little easier to read and make them look the way they used to look in older versions. Bill Schlund will walk you through editing the config options that will help you really make your Creo your Creo. I've used Creo Pro E for a lot of years. And uh, every maintenance build, it keeps getting better and better. But uh, one thing that doesn't get better is my eyesight. So there's a couple things that we can do to uh, make things a little bit more readable um, for us that are visually challenged in a little ways. But um, one of the things we can do is, is make the uh, text bigger. And what I'm going to do is make use of something called text height factor. This is a hidden config option. Uh, the default value is 70. If you make the number smaller than 70, the text actually gets bigger. And by the text, I mean your dimension values uh, get bigger, and also the tags on datum uh, features get bigger. So let's uh, take a look at doing that. First of all, if we take a look at our model here, uh, this is at the default value. So we can see, we can kind of see the, uh, the dimensional text here. Uh, if I turn on the planes, we can see that those labels are there. And it's really... This isn't really too hard to, to read. Um, you can see some diameters here. But uh, one of the things we want to do is just maybe make that a little bit uh, more visible. So I'm going to go in under File and Options, and I'm going to add a new option. Remember, this is a hidden config, so it won't be able to search for it. Um, but we say text underscore height underscore factor. Now, one of the things it does know is that it's at 70, but I'm going to say Let's knock it down smaller. 6560 should be plenty good uh, for our use. And I'll say, let's use that. And we'll save it. So I had to exit out of Creo in order for this uh, change in the config to take place. But let's uh, open up our part again. This time, the text should be a little bit bigger if we say edit. You can see it is. Not hugely different, but again, we'd make a smaller number if we wanted it bigger. Uh, if we can turn on our planes and datums here, you can see those are a little bit more legible as well. So changing it from 70 down to 60 uh, makes it doable. You can make them really big, but then they start to get kind of messy. Uh, one of the other things you'll notice here is we can see all the constraints. Um, and again, these are some icons that might be uh, kind of hard to see. So our next uh, tip that we're going to do is make some changes to those. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to go in and say that's an option, config option, again, that we can add. And this one is not a hidden config, um, but it's called sketcher underscore pre. And if we say find now, Pre-Creo, Pre-Creo 4. So I'm just going to say, and you notice the default is no. I'm going to say yes. Let's set that to our new option. So I'm going to say OK. And we'll save this. If we did go back into uh, the sketch, let's say to redefine, let's say this whole and we take a look at it, you can see we have the old constraints. So I didn't have to exit out uh, here, but you can see we have the old style constraints where things are assumed uh, in alignment. And uh, we can see the R1 and R2 meaning they're equal. So this is kind of the old school way that uh, it's always been in Creo. If you do like those, and again, it's a little bit sometimes easier to read. Uh, one of the things you'll notice on the downside is that if we take a look at this guy, um, when we saw the constraints before, before turning this on, and if we pick on this guy and say edit, you notice it shows the constraints, but they aren't highlighted as much with the little icons that they used. And it seemed like there were a ton of icons here. The same are there, but it's just they're kind of condensed a little bit more. But again, uh, one of the things that we can do is set the uh, constraint displays in the sketcher back to the uh, old style pre Creo 4 type uh, using that particular config option. Uh, the next thing, kind of along the same lines of cleaning things up, is we're going to take a look at the uh, 
at the web browser and some of the tabs that it has. One thing if you're running Creo out of the box, you notice that there's a variety of different tabs that come up by default. We have the uh, kind of a resource tab, which is real useful, right? We have some tutorials, getting at support, um, getting some other information. There's also a parts community, there's a 3D model, but this is a little bit more than what I want. I'd really like to turn all these guys off. So my tip is to how to get rid of these. I'm gonna go into my config, I'm going to add some uh, config options here. Uh, the first one we want to turn off is that 3D model space. So it's just called enable. Three D model space underscore three model space browser tab. You notice by default it's yes. I'm going to say no. We're going to add that. We'll add another one. It's called Enable Part Community Part Community tab. And we're going to set that to no. And then finally, that's the resource page. I'm going to say add another one. This is a hidden config, so we're not going to be able to search for it or browse for it. We just got to type it in. It's called enable underscore resource underscore browser tab. You notice we have no values here, and this is where we type in no. We'll say let's save this. As you can see, upon restarting Creo, all the tabs are gone. Now I've put in one that just has a blank page. Uh, we'll talk about that in a couple seconds. But now we don't have the extra information that we um, had before, and we've customized our environment a little bit. Now that we've cleaned up the browser tabs, we can start thinking about what we want to have be our default home page. First thing we could do is if we are working in a windchill environment, uh, we could set the web browser to go to uh, the windchill home page. Uh, here I have that. I'm just going to say copy that. And we'll go over to File, go into our options. I'm going to add our web browser home page. And we'll set that to our windchill home page. We'll add that. Upon restarting Creo, we see that we have a, a login. So I'm going to log in. And now my home page is my home page in windchill. If we don't have Windchill or we don't have a company homepage that we want to set it to, uh, more often than not, maybe we just want to leave it blank. So I'm going to go into the same options that we had before. And this time for our homepage, I'm just going to type in about colon blank. This will just give us a blank page. And as you can see, when I restarted Creo, we can see that we just have a blank home page here. So nice, neat, clean, um, very useful. In summary, we modified our Creo environment. Uh, first of all, we went in and changed the text height factor, made it a smaller number, less than 70, and that increased the size of our dimension text and our uh, tags on our datum features. We can see an example of text height factor here set at 70, which is the default. And then the picture below, we're seeing it set at uh, 65, just made it a little bit larger, the text. Then we went in and we changed the constraints. 
uh, display to be pre Creo 4. Uh, on the left is the default, what we see. Uh, lots of constraints, little small icons representing those. And then when we set that value back to the old dog way of doing it, um, where it displayed it as it always has, uh, we can see that representation there. And then we finally went into our browser and uh, got rid of some of those extra tabs that are up there. Uh, so we just basically unenabled uh, several of these. Remember, the last one is a hidden config, so we have to type that in fully in order to have it work. But uh, hopefully these are useful tips to you and uh, help you to customize your Creo environment to your liking. There you go. Some great tips for those of you that want a little bigger font or a little simpler interface. You can find the config options Bill mentioned in the description below. I hope this helps you set up Creo just right for you. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. And if you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section below. I'll talk to you soon.